Welcome, new updates, uh, new collection, a bit of everything. There are gifts in here, there are orders in here, just the usual. No interviews for now. We are listening to Blackhurst, a uh, tape that came out on Into the Pentagram, which is a Australian label that has four releases out now. Um, this was, um, it came up on one of the YouTube Black Metal sites, Mount de Gloria, or another one, I'm not sure. At the same time, Iron Bonnet had it in, and uh, the day after, Feral Heart uh, put it up for sale, so I had three hints as where to look. Uh, it's a duo from, I'm not sure where, the label's from Australia, but I don't think they are. Reverse Vein, Tyrannic Deluge, but I'm not sure where they're from. The lyric sheet doesn't help. It is very nicely done, but it's literally just came in and I don't know much about it. Just the recommendations by those distros or labels. Um, so yeah, it is it reminded me of Larva a bit. A feral heart called it Rotten Necro Metal of Black Doom. So yeah, uh, it is that doom, but with a lot of black metal influences, I guess. There you go, black hearst. Uh, for fans of Masters Hammer, Veratron, and Mortuary Drape, which, yeah, considering the death and the doom and the whatevers. Uh, we are going to start with a small order from Werewolf Records. Uh, I kind of forgot to pick up the Satanic Warmaster again, even though it was his label. But it was mainly after this one. This is the Behead Messe de Mort. Um, came out on 7 inch uh, a very long time ago. It was kind of expensive all the time. Nice red tape. Uh, and then when um, Werewolf decided to put it out again, I grabbed the tape, and of course, now there's a 12 inch out. Um, yeah. We are underground, and this is true. This is sound of fucking cruel schizophrenic sounds, mystical chaos, and total orgasm. There you go. A uh, classic in the um, schizophrenic sounds. Love the new layouts for them. Um, yeah, a classic in their lineup or their discography. Barrett, Satanic Chaos, Seven Blasphemy, and Messe de Mort. That alone went around the world to that title. So. There you go, there's a 12 inch, but kind of like the red case. I have some Behera tape, so it fits. To my surprise, they had a, um, well, I knew they had a tape distro, uh, but they had these, and these are the Blood Knights of the Imperial Twilight, the um, weird colorful cover that I had up. It's not, it's also colorful, but not that one. Um, yeah, on Dead Hymns, these came out on Dead Hymns 2 and pretty early because this is Dead Hymns 4 and 3, if I'm not mistaken. There you go, these are the backs. Um, this is a bit m even more chaotic than uh, the other one, it's much more noisier. Uh, it's not as produced as the other record, but um, I liked them at the time. When the record came out, I checked them a bit. Um, my goose is acting. Yeah, cool artwork. The logo is still schizophrenic, but yeah, so did Behera, so. Two good tapes. Uh, the colors are like this. They kind of don't think of, or do they? Let's see. Mm, maybe. But yeah, glad to have these. And they were, they are still in stock there if you are half interested. Uh, then. There was a small trade with a, uh, a Belgian guy called Ari that uh, is starting a web shop. He uh, is he was a death metal musician, I think, late uh, 80s. Not in this band. And um, he contacted me because of the uh, Circle of Ouroboros interview I did with Clemmy and the video after it. And he said, yeah, I've been following for a while. Here's my collection if you need something or you want something. It was mainly for the Circle of Ouroboros that we talked. Uh, just shoot me a line. He wanted um, talking heads from me and I think flipper. So yeah, we traded these. And this is the first part in the journey that is Circle of Ouroboros or going back, I should say. This is Twisting the Knife of Truth and the Days Beneath on already blanking on the label. It is a small label like the Australian one that um, have four or five releases, I think. 
wouldn't be surprised if uh, it was one of them doing the label. Can I read a true face of evil? Yes, I hope not in DE, so that is Germany, that won't be the case. But yeah, this was the first thing. He had it in his collection, he had some CDs, and I think he mostly spins CDs, but this is, yeah. 2006, uh, there's another record from 2006, keep that in mind, so you have the timeline. But yeah, really cool to have this one. This is 119 out of 400. So yeah, there's a lyric sheet. Um, musically, it is the beginning of Circle of Ouroboros, the post stuff is there, there is black metal there, and there, on the second track, the B-side, it is actually, the vocals are incredible. Uh, they just woke me up when I was listening to it, but yeah. Just a black, I think. Yes. True face of evil. That was the first thing, so we started to talk about the band. Sorry, thank you. And then um, I was looking through his collection and as a joke I said I would love this tape too. This is uh, Nick Holt's Schisma. Recently rediscovered uh, because I know them from I think New Era that I checked them because they were Dutch. Uh, a band from um, 89 so late 80s from Zwolle in the Netherlands or Holland. Uh, four guys that play Actually, very well played Dead Doom. Uh, this demo and their fur stuff survived the toot of time. Um, just a Maxell 90, I guess. Big ass tape. Uh, and the demo is on here. So the Erupted Evil Demo 1. There you go. From Zwolle, so that's not too far. Opke Zwolle is from there, so they have lineage. This is the self release demo, I think. I don't see any bootlegs or anything like that, so um, ultra thanks to Deadhead Yuanti on Osfix, their parents of course, Evoker Magazine, Achtschok, nice, Heineke, Ay. and all the mags that supported us, yeah. so yeah, cool to have this one. Tracklist is Doom of the Necroslaughter, Erupted Evil, Bestial Lust, Crucified Carcass, Mass Murderer, Triumph of Death, that cover of Hellhammer, so there. That is where you should situate them. Bert Bulle, Gronald, which is a bit metal. He was a singer and Barney. Um, they have this. This is from uh, 98. Then you have, or 80, no, 98. Then you have um, Life and Zwolle, which is also from 98, but from, yeah, it's live, so it's 36. Uh, 89 and then you have the Necro Carnation, which is a 90s demo that is unreleased although it's on the discography album I think Putrid Cult did so yeah, here you go the contact if you want maybe they still have a tape for you but Yeah, Ari, thank you very much. This was actually a joke and it's cool that he just said yeah, sure, why not He went to his father's house to check if it um, <laughs> If it was still listenable, it's actually very very listenable good good cassette so I think he watches, I guess. So, Ari, thank you. I hope you enjoy the records. Then, one more trait. I was going to say gift, but the gift is that this guy will give me this. Right after the Oscar Carve Cross thing we are going to talk about next week. Um, I came home and uh, P, or Felipe, I guess, from uh, Satanist contacted me and he said, Hey, uh, I saw you did the Carf Cross discography thing and you know he was, I was going to see them live. So he said, uh, I have this, the live rehearsal, uh, self released by them, Australian. It's that forestry standard envelope, so you know it has to be real. Um, yeah, it's just a Xerox envelope thing they released, and this is number 20 out of 33, I guess. But the more important thing is that. Uh, Satanist had his baby finally, um, so yeah, congratulations to him, the wife, and of course, the kid. This is my kid, I traded a Traw tape, I think, that seems to be gold these days, so yeah. One more time, the cover, just a tombstone, I guess, highly contrasted black and white, you know how they do it, there you go. Older, I'm not sure when. Does it say that is one detail that's lost on me? They actually kind of still look the same at a life in a live setting. Um, I think they have corpse paint, but it could be just a high contrast. Although no, they're corpse painted because the drummer has it. There you go. 
very nice and it's just a sturdy nicely detailed but white tape with nothing on there nothing scratched no so yeah Felipe, thank you very much and once again congratulations um wonderful time hellish times to come but wonderful time thank you onwards to the next carved cross and i'll see you all in part two welcome um we are going to talk about babylon doom cult as a label this time and as a distro still firing on all cylinders i kind of lost them a bit because they uh, moved and they went quite a bit but they are back now and they actually have been back because i've been missing a few things mostly because my order was lagging behind uh, my fault not yours fault this is the first one there you go already gort i think already gort yes uh, from babylon doom cult and into endless chaos i always forget it's a viewer release but nice to nice of them to tag along um this is a project from the guy i'm blanking on his name yeah, I'm liking his name from um, Witch Trail. Yes, Witch Trail, among other bands. Um, I think he's also in Bockerreders, and I guess that's it. Witch Trail was a band that we had under the radar for hypertension, uh, but then they did a live at Roadburn tape, which I have, and then they went to Babylon Doom Cult because uh, our second box wouldn't come off the ground, I guess. Uh, is his name in here? There we go. Jeffrey Andreka, together with Arne Ruckhout and Lawrence Ostrom. Um, yeah. It is actually a very good demo. There are five tracks on here. It was recommended to me by um, Peter from Arkadale. He is their roadie ish, I guess. I met him once, but uh, that was on the famous Halloween party at the MLD. So. Weird that I still remember, but yeah. Fuck your world is the slogan on here. It is um, it is all over the place, just like Witch Trail in a sense that it has multiple genres going crisscross. Witch Trail did the same, but even more. This seems a bit more focused, a bit more fun. Uh, although that is not the right way to say it, of course, but yeah. Um, it's black metal. It's a bit, like I said, all over the place. Malthusian rock and roll is what they call it, which is also fair description I guess. Uh, Outlaw Rock is what I heard. There is a lot of influences from First Wave. Uh, I don't know if the picture shows it. No, it's just a uh, Flemish house in that. But yeah, it has First Wave influences. There is There are sing-alongs on here, but the First Wave manifests itself, or the proto-black metal manifests itself in the Merciful Fate vocals, for example, on the, I think, second to last track maybe, Sadist of Grimas. Um, yeah, it's a bit of the no future, you know, outlaw rock, but yeah, actually very good. This, I think, I like this best. I didn't hear um, Bokereres yet, but check it out. Two labels, two good labels. Maybe I'll play it next. Um, then I got um, this one. This was the first thing I ordered, I guess, the Niedernis, Niedernis, I should say. Uh, beyond the Gleam of Night Sky, a lot of releases uh, from Portugal, I think. Um, an atypical style for Portugal, it is more of the IRA than Vitala, maybe, in that the fact that it is very well played, not that you know what I'm saying, uh, a very good production, but still it has that ethereal feel because um, there's a lot of air in the music. All the doesn't get muddy, a lot's being played, but it's it's always very clear. It is not the KV Portugal style. Um, it reminds of uh, Le Jean Noir, but that's basically, in my head, because that's basically because uh, Vlad Drakenstein did the, um, I think the mastering, maybe the production, one of the two. Um, but yeah, reminds also of some Greek stuff. That's probably because I've been listening to Macabre Omen a lot, so yeah. Larger than life, screaming at a wall, you know, the, the image that um, Marcabre Omen gives. It has a dungeon vibe, it has lamp on vocals, so yeah. And it's on black gangrene, I know you are going to check it out. Um, I think I got to know them because they had their first full length on Skull. That's probably why I know them. And I have been following, I have a split 7 inch and maybe something else, but yeah. Recommend it if you like everything I just said. I'm going to switch the music and then 
switch it out. Ori Gort is playing Ori Gort. I think that's how you call it. I'm not sure. Look at the lettering. There you go. This one, however, uh, recommended the Black Hearst. Grab it up if you can, if you are into, you know, the Dead Doomed stuff. But yeah, very good. Then, um, in the same way that the Nidrenes has a good production, this is the, not the new Vetefrak or the latest, I'm not sure. It is Satanic Black Moloch from 2021, 22. Actually, not sure. I didn't write it down and it's black and green, so there's not much info. It is Vretevark, so it's not much info. Uh, from Bosnia, Herzegovina, but it's heralded as unknown band, so I'm not going to pry too much about who is in here. Out of the starting blocks they go. Um, the Dominion of Terror, was that a full? Dominion of Terror, I think so. That was a Compared to this, again, a, almost a rock and roll record, uh, in the sense that it had, for Vetevark, an unbelievable production. It was like, yeah, a lot of other black metal bands that started out very raw, that, yeah, <laughs> that just had production all of a sudden. Um, there is a post influence on this, uh, I think, on one of the songs, maybe the Necromantical Black Metal. But after that, and it's a post like you sh like you find in uh, Brand or the Furtwig stuff. It is very minimal, but I heard it. Um, but that is just something to hold on to, be because after that they just start peeling the fingers and it's you just fall into an abyss. It is not as raw, disgusting, and ambient as their early works or the compilation uh, that Asgard did, I think. Um, but it is heavy still. It is uh, desperate howls, desperate vocals, there's whistles in there. Um, and yeah, there, even the soloing synths just get sucked back into a uh, into a black hole. It's just like everything stumbling over the entire time. But Very good record, very clear, I think. Uh, there are some samples in here. There's a, a laugh that scared me when I was listening to it at night and woke me up uh, out of the nightmare. But yeah, it is the last track is an ambient track, but not like previous. It is more soundtracky. It is um, a multimedia black mass of negativity, is what I wrote down. So you know, or maybe you don't know what to expect. But this is a very dirty, still record. I think a great step back, if you will, from uh, the Dominion of Terror, but not a negative step back. Just something new with something old mixed up. But yeah, took me long enough to get it, but here I am. Second part of the order for um, Babylon, but I'm rattling and prattling on. Um, then this is a bit of a cheat. I have two more, but this is the 7-inch first. In the ever-growing Akitsa collection, I obtained uh, at, the, at the festival, Oscar Fest, um, the Armatus Akitsa. I just grabbed it probably while intoxicated. Uh, and put it on my heap, but I'm going to show it now because I have the uh, Sang Nordic laying here. Um, this is a 7 inch split with the last one was from Folger. I'm blanking on a Greek band, but I'm blanking. This is Armatus from Germany. I have one of their records, which I need to listen to again because the last time I couldn't get into it, I think. Uh, maybe start here. Sniper Records, EJ Farben. It's Akitsa, so it has to be in the collection. The collection is steadily growing because I don't, I'm not in uh, need of originals from these things. The hospital productions have been pressed a lot, and they have been pressed good. So I'm just um, going to go for those, like this one, the uh, Sang Nordic. Let's put this away. This was in the distro from Yo. He um, gave me. Or I ordered this and then he sent me the um, Total Servitude, sorry, the first one. Uh, so this was the rectification. This is the second full length, I think, by Akitsa. I could be mistaken, but Guti maybe? Dutch, English, French. 
Let's go. Sang Nordic. Um, blood of the North, Northern Blood, something like that. Um, this is a double LP that has the entire um, remastered, I guess, for vinyl record on here with Finn, the outro that were, was originally on the CD, I think, but maybe fell off. And then there's the Sang Nordic rehearsals, which is a bit confusing because there's one track, Frontière, is on here that is in the rehearsal and the rest of the tracks are not on the record. So it's from, when was it? 2008 and the record is from 2001. So it's kind of confusing why it, uh, it said recorded, recorded in, the, um, in the spirit of the time or something like it, but I couldn't find the timeline for that one. Nonetheless, it is a very rough, record, not rough, but a very, Visceral recording of a kids' live recording, and yeah, to see them live would be incredible. Um, this one has you have the um, you have the total servitude and the goatee, the first demo, I should say, and the full length. And the, those have those high pitched vocals, still, especially the first one, uh, those are less on here. Um, than on the first two, so this is more where the first and the second one are basically very raw but yeah primitive Canadian black metal the street punk kind of creeps in here and street punk in a way that um, not oi but yeah there's a street punk chalk in here especially the third track and the fourth track Pontiac and Saint Nordic um, those two are incredible Au Combat is my favorite track on here but what was I going to say? Um, yeah, it has that punk chalk in here that comes, in my opinion, more from something like Iljarn because some outlaws in here too. There is some electronic stuff in here. That's why there's a connection to the hospital productions scene. So it goes all over the place. There's a drone in here. Uh, this is actually a very good record. Um, but yeah, scenes or, or bands like uh, Horrible Room, Everything from that box, uh, My School Cop More, I know for a fact, has a very looks up to uh, Akitsa in a very esteemed way. Um, yeah, it's the, the performance, even on record, is always leave it all on the canvas or leave it all on the record or on the stage, whatever you want to call it. And it has that French intonation in the voice and in the language that just there's French and there's Canadian French. And I think Canadian French, it's, it's colder over there, so that's what it is, I guess. But it gives you that scrunched up look in your face and it's fight music, au combat. So yeah. Like I said, the vocals are less high. This is from 2001, which is actually still kind of early in the, what is this, the fourth wave of black metal, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, very good record and um, maybe my first favorite in the uh, discography. I'm working with the full lengths. I'm, because I was under the impression that I knew Akitsa uh, because I was into the part of Chandelier and it got mixed up with Dominic Ferno and then OT, which is actually this guy. Um, so yeah, I thought I always knew Akitsa, but when you start to listen to it, you hear more than just the uh, ice cold, ice, ice cold Canadian black metal, and there's much more in here. So if you don't know Akitsa, uh, don't be stupid like me and think you know it. Get to know it. So yeah. That is, I think, nope, I'm wrong. That um, there's one more records from the label itself, not from the distro. Um, I'm clumsy today. I'm going to calm down. Have a sip. Cheers. Cheers to Satanism. We are drinking the Eau de Cam There you go. It's okay. Not much flavor, but it's okay. Last thing. Um, this is Verloren. There you go. This is from 2006. Let's start there. Um, so is the um, Circle of Ouroboros. And for reference, because Despel Omega came up in the interview they did with Hollywood. Despel Omega was between the first and the second, so between C and Fass. Kinos around that time. So that is where we are at with Belgian black metal at the time. A four piece that um, got the scope of Danny on them 
from Go to Warx. When we did the interview, we were talking. There is a bit in there of um, where we talk about Belgian black metal, and I think Paragon Impure was the catalyst for that part. It went to Gemdrat, uh, Gemdrak, sorry. Um, they did the full length and then Verloren in Zalvent Onmin came out on Go to Warx in 2006 um, as a CD. Danny at the time had yeah, a scope on Belgian black metal. Uh, in the article, I think the drummer says that uh, it's probably because someone recommended it to Danny. Danny opted not to press this, but you will did from Babylon Doom Cult. There is a bit of promo in here, but it looks beautiful, so we'll show it. First thing is Halloween represses. We know those. I don't know what this is, but knock yourself out. Tapes, more tapes. Then there is this one, I know the Urhex, this is the first demo, the second demo just came out. Belgian guy, I don't know what this is. Yeah. Good releases. And then this, and this is a uh, world I am completely lost in the arts, black metal, I always think. This and Lost of them. The Wiederkehrkring, this There we go. I know this image. Is that cool? I don't know. Jesus. Um, it's Friday. And we're tired again, I guess. Back to the point. This is Verloren. Um, Insolvent Omnin. I thought about it, how to translate it, because normally I do them on the spot. But it means something like to Zalv is to anoint someone, like church, I guess. But Omnin means you hate the person, so you... Maybe it's from the viewpoint of a priest and he hates whatever. I don't know. But yeah, this is a classic, Belgian classic, I guess. Um, four people in here, the most known is Noctis, who is also responsible for uh, working in Godmorg. Uh, very good Belgian, two very good Belgian demos. He is also, of course, Paragon Impure. Um, what else? He, uh, after this, because Verloren had a very short existence. Uh, they played a few live shows. They, what was the bigger band that took them under their wing? I forget. I think in, oh, um, Krieg with Neil Jameson. He is a big fan of this one. Here are the guys. Noctis, who now, of course, plays bass in Lugu Um No liner notes, no credits. Just remember, you're worthless, ignorant and weak, and we've come to rub it in your face once more. So yeah, they are back. Slightly um, remastered for vinyl, but not too much, according to the interview. Here is the lyric sheet. It's in Dutch, so for the lucky few, I guess. White on the back. That's a bit a bummer. Dutch lyrics. Um, sound is it's slow to mid-paced. Mostly they can be a venain or um, yeah, they can attack in, or surprise in some ways. Uh, it's not just slow pace. Yeah. Very good production on the sleeve and on the, on the vinyl. Depressive sounds. Um, did I write anything down? Yeah, the depressive in sound and teams. Um, yeah. I like it, but I don't know it too well. I need to check it way more in this, but um, yeah. Dulos Duala is the classic, of course, and then there are a lot of things on here, but it kind of has that DSBM-ish, maybe it's because of the themes or because I know what the lyrics are about, but kind of has that depressive feeling, so that is not totally my bag all the time, but they were on the um, speech of the GOAT um, sampler also from Go to Warx that had Kamdrak for, for one of the bands. Life Lover was also on there, which is, you know, Brothers in Crime and then Drowning the Light was also on there. So they were in good company on that label. Yeah, glad that it is um, remastered and you know, put on vinyl for our ears. That's done. Hey. Let's go. We have a new era order. Um, yeah, new era order with some extra strun in. Let's go. Detroned. Um, VSOD, basically. Uh, Saar Brücken. They started out as mysticism from 90 to 93. This is from 94. 
and these are um, like the, what was it? Which had the live tracks? I, hmm, Rough Evil? I'm not sure. Um, I'm mixing up stuff. I need to regroup. Yes, here we go. Cyborgan BSOD from 94. Um, these tracks were released on a uh, tape before, but never the complete session that this is. And this is uh, Kristen Tolt, Brennende Kirchen, and then Our Kingdom. On Wasted Life, uh, originally, I think, and then the CW Productions picked it up for a re release. There you go. Dutch, uh, very synth heavy. It is two tracks on here, uh, two guys on here. It is not just. Did I write that down? Yes, Barcayal, I guess, and uh, BSOD or Corneus is uh, the other guy. There you go. Very synth heavy, uh, medieval sounding synth. I can't undo myself of the fact that I hear dance in here, but uh, it's just, I think I figured it out that he just had the same synth or the same patches or whatever you want to call it as the Belgian. At the time, it is 94, so yeah, that's smack in the middle of bonsai and whatever. So yeah, another little classic thing from that side of the world. Did I write anything? No, that's it. Yeah, the bonus tracks. There you go. Can never have enough. Weirdness. Oligort. Then, a new era. Basically, the main thing in the order was the uh, Medieval Prophecy records, of course, but they had uh, they had that, and then they had this one. This is the Goat Moon Die Serpent Wolf Nacht, Wolf Nacht Split on uh, Quilt, I guess. Or, what label is that? No Sign of Life, but distributed through Cult. This is a double record, or a three-sided LP. I'll get it out because it has a great edge. Um, yeah, it's Goat Moon. The tracks from Goat Moon on. To be honest, I bought it because of Goat Moon because I think I have most of the stuff except for the uh, the Cold Lake of Goat Moon that is Stella Polaris. I I don't know. That's the first one I heard, and I had to go way back to appreciate it. These tracks are also very weird. Um, they try to invoke the spooky atmosphere. But it is like Gaspop metal meeting spooky, not, I don't know what they are doing. Wolfnacht, uh, this is my first, the first time I get to know this one man project, I think from Germany, because it's all in German. Both tracks were originally composed in 2001 for the debut album and re recorded in 2021. Then the Goat Moon and Thy Serpent, this is the thing they did the goats, the wolf, and the snake. Look at the black goat picture. Incredible. Wolfnacht and Die Serpent. So Wolfnacht, nothing wrong with it. It is a bit too triumphant for me, uh, if you will. But uh, the aesthetics are at least here uh, on point. I know they are uh, on Asgard for their full length, but not 100% my style. A bit abruptum, but more less folky. Something like that, I don't know. But then Die Serpent is a Finnish band that was uh, active for a long time actually and they still are it seems they started in 92 in Espo Finland um, and they started by Sami Tenets there have been a few roster changes I assume it is Finnish black metal so why the hell not uh, everybody plays in everybody's band because the guy I just mentioned has cult records um, in Finland he distributed this he's the man behind the record and he's also or was the life guitarist or one of the live guitars for Goldman, so they all intermingle. Um, they um, have two demos, the 95 and the 96, blanking on the name, they have very colorful covered full lengths, but the way I know them is from their uh, Tour de Kart cult split with Ashpool and they had a really good track on there. Ashpool was Dominic Ferno, once again, he keeps popping up. Uh, very good track. Six minute track. This is a very long track. I think this is. Didn't write it down, but it's a long, long track. For a black metal track. It's 15 minutes. So I was kind of over exaggerating, but you know what I mean. It is one side of the LP. I'll show the. 
that side's thy serpent. So it's kind of a bit of a comeback. The etching is the same thing. Hey, come on. Um, it's kind of a bit of a comeback because the uh, split with Ashpool was 2019. This is a, their big comeback, but it feels like a goodbye track. It is very. It is mid paced to fast in some ways, but it's very doomy and it's actually slow sounding. So, yeah, it's everything. Very long track, very engaging track. It reminded me a bit of Paquette Maximo, but less technical maybe. It's not really hypnotizing, but still a very good, very good track. So, I would put them on top of the split, uh, Wolfnacht, and then unfortunately, <laughs> the black gold picture is better than the tracks on here. I was under the impression uh, because the latest Gold Moon is more their early work together with their new sound, I should say. Uh, live they were incredible. But yeah, it, they still haven't clicked, clicked with me. The live was maybe there. But I was under the impression that these tracks would be outtakes or, you know, from the session for the album, but it's no. Anyway, that was the order from New Era. I, this one it also belongs in the next video, but I'll show it now. This is uh, Hard Evidence Illegal Activities 2009 by Goat Moon. I uh, ordered this together with a bunch of other records before the fest at uh, Christkiller Distribution, who is worth supporting if you are into some serious black metal. Uh, he gifted me this one on top of the other records. Uh, this is basically just a live. I don't know. I don't even know if it's a bootleg. Uh, we'll see how we handle that. <laughs> this is on Bestial Burst. I... Who was on Bestial Burst? There's another Finnish guy behind that one. That this is live in Lati, Finland, Czech Republic, Germany, Helsinki, Finland. So a lot of cops. There's an insert, and I don't know. The back to the past, into the future. Hell Conjurer. Oh yeah, there we go. That's the first. So yeah, a uh, live records. A sing, a single. I need a lot of cleaning to do. Single records. One side is more cops, very innovative. But then black gold in his Isengard shirt. That was a good man. And I think that's all the gold moon I have for today. Yeah. Perfect timing. There we go. Nicole Skizma. Great tape. All right. Thank you. Guys playing in the back. Let's finish on a high note. Like I said, the new era order was, of course, for the uh, Medieval Prophecy Records update, whatever you want to call it, record draw. Um, they promised something nice. They promised us uh, the Moon of Xesbet, Dawn of Morbid Sorcery, which is fun to have, but the other one will be even more fun. Came with two records, with two long sleeves. Sorry, didn't came with it, but there you go. Légion de Noir from the band. Cool. I kind of wish they had, you know, stronger sleeves, but that's it. No more complaining about that. And then this one is the Forever Rotten Winter, which is also a nice one. They call. So, first things first, Dawn of Morbid Sorcery from Moonen of Xesbet, uh, Belgians, one of Belgians' biggest export products, of course, on Medieval Prophecy. Let's see what they have in stock for us. Forbidden Temple 2, Pact with Evil, I think I said that, to the two Dragon Hills also, but then Orc Blood Ghost Path to Sepen Sepentrium. There you go, Orc Blood, the T7 inch. Again, one of the ancient hounds. This one is the, I think they all came with a coaster, the color and the black ones. Medieval Prophecy and New Era Productions made an alliance, so they are doing their um, distribution, I guess, or their production maybe even. Um, so yeah, it all comes from there now. And they pressed, I think they took a gamble and pressed a lot, I, I think. What I see and what I notice that is that a lot of distros where I come that I still see their releases around and it's a true shame because 
they don't have too many stinkers, but I think I suck their dick enough. Um, this is, like I said, Dawn of Morbid Sorcery, one of the first demos, if not the first demo, by this Perverted Ceremony sideband. You can't say sideband, but yeah, there you go. Intro, Black Devotion, Mystery, Dawn of Morbid Sorcery, Obscured by Lunar Rites, Heretic Wisdom, Recorded by Unclean Spirits in the Coldness of 2016-2017. So, it's actually some time has been going true or has passed. Um, if by any chance you look at this channel and don't know Moon and Mox as bad, they play a uh, very basement dwelling. This is the green, white, black marble. It's a beautiful addition. Uh, they play this, yeah, basement dwelling, very moldy, dead doom that reminded reminds of Xantatol from um, Poland. They themselves at the Bardo Methodology interview gave uh, what did they do? Rotten Christ with Satan Ostidium, Behemoth, uh, The Return of the Northern Moon, which gets heralded by uh, some other Belgian luminaries or newer luminaries, and then the Carpathian Forest first demo are some of their influences. Um, they have a few demos, seven inches, no full length yet. Um, I'm not sure. This proves they're still alive, maybe, uh, although that could be the label. We'll see. Uh, I hope they do something more or prefer it. Or, um, so yeah, we'll see. But this is actually very nice to have on vinyl. It's basically the same. There's no extra tracks, no rehearsals, no nothing. There you go. Cheers to them. But then, poster. Secure. I have two posters. Thank you, Jasper. The main ticket is this one. Regnum Tenebrarum Efter Les Enfers. Or Les Enfers. Always mix it up. It's one letter. Come on. This is Légende Noire. The first thing I noticed that on every digital image um, they had the accent circumflex, I guess, on the E, which disappeared all of a sudden. That is extremely nerdy, I know. But. Nonetheless, I noticed a bunch falls out, of course, the flyer. No issue of the third zine. There you go. This was on the package celebrating the um, new era medieval prophecy connection. There is a lyric sheet. I'll show that first and then we'll go into the cover. What this is, is in my opinion, or probably one of my favorite records of the year. Um, I had the tape. Jay sent me for, um, yeah, I don't know, just to listen to, I guess. This is the first full length EP, I don't know how they call it, um, by Renum Tenebrarum called Légion Noir, and it has become a very good record, a lot of variation between the tracks. You have seven tracks on here. There's intro, which is uh, a very woeful, maybe the most woeful synth intro I ever heard. It has the perfect tone, you can... It's like you are entering the Ardennes, I guess. You, you, you're you in the forest. Then, Mystère is very hard, and that's the first song, actually. Very hard, very hard on the attack. Um, the voice is kind of feral, but it stays calm in, this, in the same way, like it's, you know, in the forest again. Um, Mid-paced, uh, mid the vocals also have these second part to them that is more um, storytelling you know in the back or in front it just switches um, yeah mid paced what did I oh yeah there's mid there's a very mid paced catchy part that has these rumbling bass drums that come in that lift the track up and it keeps propelling forward so that's a very good you know entry to it um, before we go into the other tracks, sound-wise, um, I was hearing Concilium, but it's more the other bands that are linked to them, like Osculum and Farm and Bekira, the French bands. There's Gorgoroth in there, according to, I think the label said that, I, maybe early, yeah, possible. Um, I think I read, it, what was the other thing, um, the Parade of Town, Judas Iscariot, maybe, yeah can hear it here and there but yeah it's a nice mix of all those styles together with some Belgian-esque influences because 
they have been around for some time. They have it's the second one. They have a lot of bands. And the third track is then the um, Terror, which is their pulled back track, their slower track. It slows down all, all of a sudden. You have these um, Selenite scrolls, kind of hypnotizing brew comes up, but then it the track just keeps on rolling and it you know, it goes faster, 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 faster until the interlude, which is a medieval guitar playing, very nice in the middle, breaks the record up. Um, but yeah. Slow and hypnotizing. Um, did I write anything? Marvelous vocals and the synth underneath building the entire track up. It, yeah, it's, it just flows really nicely. Uh, nice variation in the tracks, but I said that one. Then we come to the Prosterne Trois and La Vissière du Mal, I think. The uh, fifth and second track. Which, in my opinion, and that's not a bad thing, I think, is one big track. You should see it as one piece that closes, I think, maybe it's side two, I'm not sure, but it closes out the record um, in a very good way. Um, a harder track, yes, it's one-two punch, uh, the vocals become less calm and more frenzied, but not to the point that it's overbearing. Production, synths, guitar, sometimes a bit muddy, but very, that is literally the only thing I can say about it. Uh, and then. Um, Daisare, I think that's how you call it. It's, um, what does it mean? Did I write that down? It's like, um, yeah, write down. Uh, Desiree is the day of red or the, uh, the final judgment by God, I guess. Um, and, uh, it's kind of a hymn or a um, Latin hymn or a song that depicts the end of days or the end of times for this guy, I think it is anti because it's also it's not a black metal track or not an Amy track, it's just a guy, this guy, singing, you know, Dice Array, uh, which rounds this thing up. Uh, the wolves start howling in the back, so he is a goner. So is this video. Very good record. It is still in stock, it is in distros, it's not selling out, so get it and support, you know. So good music. This will be one. Um, thank you to everybody who, you know, once again, traded, gifted, whatever you want to call it, Ari, uh, Satanist, I guess that's it, you will have one. Thank you very much, and I'll see you, I think, next week, when I can wrap my head around what that is. Um, yeah, that's it. Three quarters of an hour long enough. Cheers to the baby, cheers to the father, cheers to the mother. We'll drink to you tonight. Guys, have a great weekend and I'll see you ASAP. Peace.